Uh, and obviously you mentioned where keepers stand and what keepers do. Um, I kind of have this theory almost that there is, uh, and every keeper is slightly different, there is like an optimum position where the, wherever the ball may be on the pitch, where the, the body shape of the striker, uh, whether they, you know, where can they shoot? Can they hook the ball across you into that corner? If not, yeah. then, you know, maybe even just half a yard, you yeah. might be able to sneak here. Uh, things like this, again, is, is there anywhere where they can get these kind of resources or is this just purely experience playing more of the I th games? I think the, I think the experience of, of actually being in the goal and and, um, uh, and this, I'll, I'll, I'll come on to it in a minute, but I think, I think it's really important as well, um, is that we can do as much as we want with the goalkeeper, as coaches, yes. as finishing, you know, doing strikes, whether it's reaction work and whatever. There's no better learning tool than the goalkeeper actually going in with the outfield players and doing finishing practices. Yeah, yeah. And um, you know, I think the the experienced goalkeepers um, they realise that that is how they're going to benefit yeah. because the variation when you go in with the pros of the strikers, you know, in that they've got all the tools to be able to, yeah, to yeah, yeah. you know, to bend you, to whip it across you. Yeah. If you come too far down the line to chip you, yeah, yeah. you know, if you're too low, you know, they beat, beat you oh, over your yeah. shoulders. You know, if you're too high and up, upright, they beat you around your feet. Yeah. So I think the goalkeepers, yeah, you want to keep them with, the, you know, the goalkeeping coach, but you need, you know, you need to actually prepare them for them while they're going into, yeah. and, and they need to do the, you know, the shooting practices with the outfield. If you can video, if you can video it, and then get an opportunity yeah. to go through it, I think that's a great lo uh, learning tool. Yeah, I mean, you just mentioned there, obviously, uh, too low, too high. Does set position vary dependent on where the shot is? Definitely, yeah. and not only where the shot is, where the ball is. Is the ball on the ground? Is it sitting up? Yeah. You know, um, it, it, it might be. Just a simple, a simple thing as where is the ball in relation to the the player. So if the ball is right underneath his feet, yeah. you know what you can't what you can't afford to do is is actually be moving down the line of the ball. Yeah. So sometimes you've got to be set, which might not be the ideal position, but it's more important for me to be set and balanced yeah. in the wrong position than to try and get to the right position yeah. and be unbalanced. So it's that the trigger of us is going to be struck. Just get yourself set, yeah. and then you know just deal with it. But the, the set position is, you know, some of the most effective goalkeepers are, are not technically the best goalkeepers. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Well, this, this is uh, again, it's something that fascinates me. In that, um, in fact, probably my biggest hero of all time, Peter Schmeichel, mm -hmm. uh, and arguably really? the best example. There's yeah. not, arguably there's a few techniques. You know, he often landed on his front. And, yeah. Uh, but then he he was so effective, oh. and it was that kind of. For me, that aura, you know, yeah. you, um, and sometimes words can't even explain uh, why. But and in fact, I mean, you touched upon it earlier about the, the sort of being keeper. This is again a personal theory that I think he's played a large part in uh, a lot of goalkeepers now in terms of the height, in yeah. particular. In that he was for a lot of managers. Uh, my guess is that he was the role model. You look at him. Yeah. That's who you want in goal. You want that big, yeah. big giant of a man. Yeah. Um, but when I mean, you speak about effectiveness, uh, I mean, the best. Was, yeah. You know, he was, um, you know, at times not textbook, but all of a sudden, I think uh, he opened the eyes of yeah. you know goalkeepers, and I, I I think all goalkeepers, regardless of what level they've they've played at, would all look at Peter Schmeichel as being yeah. a fantastic example of somebody who was effective, yeah. you know, in in all aspects of the game. Um, yes, he defended the goal. Um, he had such a psychological effect. Yeah. And to me, he was a Manchester United goalie because he got a heart as big as a dustbin lid, yeah. you know, and um, just all aspects. And then, of course, when he had possession of the ball, yeah. he, he distributed the ball better than, uh, yeah, better, yeah. better than, uh, especially from hand, yeah, the best I've ever seen, yeah. you know. And he opened, or he opened goalkeeping up, I think, for something a, a little, you know, different. Yeah. Grobler did it, yeah. you know. Grobler was probably the most proactive goalkeeper. I think Barthez did it yeah. when he played for France. Yeah. You know, very front foot, very proactive. Um, and of course, Peter came to the Premier League and was awesome. Yeah, I, mean, I know for me, Barthez was another another one that I'd, I'd watch in terms of distribution, uh, which we see as commonplace now almost, the kind yeah. of drilling it, you know, yeah. near enough head height the whole way and uh, the amount of times he put players through. For me, he was the first, 
I think Barthez was the first goalkeeper, and I say that they've got the golf clubs. Yeah. Because at the end of it, when a goalkeeper was in possession, he, he's got to have golf clubs. Yeah. If he's only got the big Bertha that can actually smash it down the middle, you know, then, you know, to. and, you know, people say, oh, Barthez, oh, great kicker of the ball. I said, no, he didn't kick it, he passed it. Yeah. And that, that is the crucial thing, is that he was the first one for me, along with Van der Sar, who actually, when they got possession, yeah. were actually thinking, where do I need to play to? What do I need? And I'd get a golf club to be able to do it. And those two um, have, have been on, in terms of dealing with the ball, yeah. have been on a different planet. Yeah. Van der Sar was... You know, Van der Sar, I, mean, I remember the first time I saw story fascinated me where he rolled out onto his left foot. Yeah. You know, something, you know, uh, he was just, and just so confident and, yeah. uh, with his left foot. And yeah. it, again, obviously something he must have worked on at an early age, which again, I guess would be a big thing for young keepers to have yeah. that as a tool. Yeah. Uh, you know, I know, um, I remember playing, in fact, but it was my hill. It was yeah. really very good oh, on two feet. Yeah. And I'll never yeah. forget as a kid, we played against them uh, and he would literally roll the ball out central, yeah. have the ball centre of the goal and have his wide man left, right, and it's what fantastic it's tool, too, you know, yeah, to pick it's people out. Yeah, pick yeah. people out.